Hello everyone, welcome to Radiology Case Review Series. In this video, we are going to look at an elderly patient who presented to emergency department following fall. Patient had known diagnosis of thymoma. On the chest radiograph, we saw multiple right-sided rib fractures. This led to CT examination as part of trauma series workup. As you scroll through the CT examination on the bone window, we can see multiple right-sided rib fractures, some of which look subacute, which was seen on the chest radiograph. On the soft tissue window, we can see the anterior mediastinal lobulated soft tissue mass, which on biopsy turned out to be thymoma. And we can see this mass is likely causing either invasion or encasement of the left brachiocephalic vein with numerous collateral vessels. There was no other additional traumatic injury seen. On the bone windows, we can see some sclerotic foci in the upper thoracic vertebral bodies. I'm just going to pull the sagittal images. On the sagittal images in bone windows, we can see multiple sclerotic foci in the upper thoracic vertebra, which was new compared to the prior CT examination performed few months ago. Given the new appearances of the sclerotic foci, there was concern for sclerotic osseous metastasis. Patient subsequently underwent MRI spine examination for further evaluation of these sclerotic foci. On the MRI examination, we can see mild compression fracture of the T3 vertebral body which has stir hyperintensity. The T9 compression fracture was seen on prior CT examination. The bone marrow appears slightly heterogeneous. On the post contrast examination, the compression fracture of T3 vertebral body shows mild enhancement. The pre contrast T1 images does not show any obvious sclerotic foci within the remainder of the visualized vertebral bodies. On post contrast images, there is slightly heterogeneous enhancement. Patient subsequently underwent follow-up chest CT examination as part of metastasis workup. This time there was no intravenous contrast administered. So on the follow-up chest CT which was performed few weeks later, we do not see the sclerotic foci which was identified on the trauma series workup. I'm just going to bring the trauma series CT for side-by-side -side comparison. So the current scan is on the left and the prior scan performed during trauma series is on the right. So these were the sclerotic foci which was seen on the trauma CT scan which we do not see on the follow-up CT scan which was performed without intravenous contrast. So what's happening here? So has the vertebral metastasis disappeared between these two scans? Let me pull the uh, prior trauma CT scan and look at it more carefully. This is the original trauma series scan which was performed with intravenous contrast. I'm just going to window. So these were the sclerotic foci which was felt to be sclerotic metastasis. But as we closely look at the images, let me zoom in here, we can see there are numerous collateral vessels which is related to the occlusion of the brachiocephalic vein. And as I scroll back and forth, we can see these collateral vessels appears to be traversing through the vertebral bodies. And same thing here, as a window more, we can see multiple collateral vessels going through the vertebral bodies. We can also see collateral vessels within the spinal canal and along the posterior aspect of the spine. Again, we can see the collateral vessels going into the vertebral bodies. Let me bring the post-contrast sagittal images. Again, as a window through the post-contrast sagittal images, we can see multiple collateral vessels, both anterior to the vertebral bodies, within the vertebral bodies, in the spinal canal and along posterior aspect of the vertebral bodies. Uh, I'm just comparing the initial scan and the follow-up scan. To summarize, on the initial scan which was performed with intravenous contrast, we can see multiple sclerotic foci in the upper thoracic vertebra which appears to be connected to the collateral vessels anterior and posterior to the vertebral bodies which was not seen on the follow-up scan which was performed without intravenous contrast. Imaging appearances are consistent with what is called as vanishing vertebral metastasis. When I did literature search, I found multiple articles on this topic. These goes by various names, vanishing bone metastasis, pseudopathological vertebral body enhancement, vertebral venous congestion. So essentially what is happening here is that our patient had proximal venous obstruction due to the thymoma encasing the brachiocephalic vein, which led to the formation of numerous collateral vessels. In the setting of obstruction of SVC or the brachiocephalic venous system, we can see four collateral pathways, namely lateral thoracic, internal thoracic, azagous venous system, and vertebral venous plexus collateral system. We are most interested in the vertebral venous plexus collateral system for our patient. 
This particularly happens due to the reflex of contrast within the paravertebral venous plexus, which is commonly seen when the intravenous contrast is injected through the affected site. This leads to the apparent pathological enhancement of the vertebral bodies and these enhancing foci will show connection through the paravertebral venous plexus as we saw in our patient on the MIP images. So this is an, a nice illustrative diagrammatic image which shows the various collateral systems which we can see within the vertebral venous plexus. So we have the anterior external vertebral venous plexus, we have the basic vertebral venous system which is joined by the anterior and posterior radicular veins as we saw in our patient on the MIP images. We have collaterals within the spinal canal. These are called the anterior and posterior internal vertebral venous plexus. We also have posterior external vertebral venous plexus along the lamina and the spinous processes. So essentially we have four collateral systems, anterior and posterior external and anterior and posterior internal vertebral venous plexus. So the teaching points from this case are whenever there is obstruction of the proximal venous system, we can have collateral vessels which can also involve the vertebral venous plexus. This can lead to focal patchy enhancement of the vertebra. This can be mistaken for sclerotic metastasis. If we do not have any prior imaging to compare, we can recommend a follow-up scan without intravenous contrast if there is no sclerotic foci on the follow-up imaging, we can be confident that the pseudopathological enhancement was due to enhancement of the vertebral collateral venous system. I hope you found this case to be interesting and informative. Thanks for your attention.